game for like two hours and i feel like we're like three hours in a uh, minimum This is pretty good. Uh, this, we're not doing too bad right here. We're out of flasks, but so we're doing pretty good. Uh. Okay, I spoke too soon. Come on, soccer. Come on, I hate the fucking attack. Uh, oh. God damn it, man. I can't beat that attack. That one attack just keeps getting me. Motherfucker. Big damage, big damage. Yeah. Loving that, loving that. Come on. Fuck. 
Fuck, man. Can you beat this boss soon? No, I can't, clearly. <laughs> I'm so close, sir. I'm so fucking close, man. Kill me. Kill me. So I can restart. I think that's like 35 fucking deaths, man. Now. I'm going back to GTA after in in three more deaths if I don't beat this thing. This is good. This is it. This is the one. This is it. I feel it. Fucker. I gotta restart. I gotta restart. It was not, in fact, the one. I thought it was the one because we got like two fucking crits back to back. Uh, God, fucking damn it, man. I'll give myself the 40 death, so.
This is just so stupid. This fucking boss, man. Come on. It's my least favorite thing, how he changes opening strategies. I hate that. Like his opening attack changes. That pissed me right off that. Are you kidding me right now? Are you kidding me right now? That's one of my deaths. That's one of my fucking deaths. I didn't even summon. I didn't even summon. Oh my god, just murder me already. Please just murder me already. These foolish ambitions to rest. A remedy? Do I have one of those? Uh, I'll see if I have one. If I have one, fuck it. No, I don't. The last one. This is the last one. Come on. Fuck 
this fucking game. Fuck this fucking stupid fucking shitty fucking really good game, man. I fucking... <laughs> Oh, five, five is three minutes, and freaking three hours and twenty minutes. Just got out into the fucking summer man. It's freaking stupid. Time thing with the five gifted subs. Fucking stupid ass fucking game. It's stupid ass fucking game. Fucking stupid ass. <laughs> I literally just played for two hours and 50 minutes. Absolutely ridiculous shit. Absolutely bloody ridiculous shit. Yeah, we'll read the, the rest of the fic while we're in the queue. Let me see where I am in the queue. Well, that was uh, painful. That was painful. That was very painful. I don't know why my Discord volume was at 100. Not Discord. Spotify. Okay, we're at 9 in queue. Uh, that's without dispatch. I don't want to do a dispatch queue because I might play Napoleon, so... I kind of want to just... Uh, do normal queue and we'll we'll read the thing while we're here uh but i'll take a quick break um once we are in i did say thank you what do you mean i said thank you for the 550s to jame I'll say it again. Thank you, Shine, for the five of please. Uh, I'm very appreciative. Uh, thank you so much. <laughs> Listen, we're just very grateful here, okay? We're very grateful. Thank you so much. All right, I'm going to go grab a quick a drink um, of water and run to the bathroom, and I'll be right back.
All right, I'm back. Okay. I have drink. I have cookies. I'm going to do. I'm going to finish off the fanfic. Mm -mm -mm. Kind of cookies, um, some white chocolate chip and some normal chocolate chip that my mum made and brought over uh, on yesterday. You guys literally said exactly the same thing. <laughs> Dry skin, have a shower. I always have a shower. On a night, having a shower is a bomb. Also, chat, I was going to do this, but we're playing Elden Ring. I was going to do this at the 12-hour mark, but let's do it uh, in 40 minutes instead. 40 minutes, we're going to do a power hour. We're going to power hour, so we're going to do double sub time, triple dono time. So, top of the hour, 40 minutes. Uh, we're going to do a power hour. So I'm going to post it in Discord before we do a sub reader. Not sub read. Fucking thing about reader. <clears throat> uh, subathon. Ghost King. What? Oh, God. I did not know what you were saying then. You do do. White on white. I post it in Discord so people know it's happening. Uh, Can't get there when? Um, I haven't got it yet. <laughs> but whenever I get it, I'll be down whenever. Let's uh, have a look. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Let's have a I didn't put a thingy pop. I was going to put a gift though. What the fuck is this gift? <laughs> Sure. All right. 
let's grab the fanfic while we are in the thing. Yeah. Um, Ria, where did you put the thingy? Facebook energy, a hundred percent. I think it was on page nine. Okay, where were we? Let's have a look. Um, <clears throat> well, here we go. All right, <clears throat> I found it. Let's put on, I don't know what music I want on. Okay, so this is Make History or in brackets rest in or rest in peace by Llama and Chat. Uh we started really earlier, but we're gonna finish it off. Uh, it was a sub goal. Uh this is what chat voted on and we're gonna finish it off. It is a honestly it's great. It's really well written. It's one of a lot of um fanfics that people have written in Discord, but this one is Richard's Dead and Matt meets him. In a haunted house, and we're going from there. Um, but Richard died. Uh, okay, this music. So it's something. Richard died, and we don't know how. I want to find out how. Anyway, so do you want me to look up? Matt asked. Uh, studiously avoiding Richard's eyes, and Richard made a confused sound. Look up what. How you died? I could probably look it up. Can't be too hard to find. The internet's a magical place. Oh, Richard said and fell silent, staring at the ground. Matt found himself regretting bringing this up at all. Oh, excuse me. Oh, I'm getting tired. Oh no, it's the 12 hour mark. I might need to blow my nose. Oh, fuck. Please don't be allergies. <clears throat> It might be another ginger British man with the glasses. Okay, <laughs> shut up. But let me blow my nose really quick. Do you want me to look it up? Matt asked. Uh, oh, yeah. Anyway, how you died? I could probably look it up. It can't be too hard to find. The internet's a magical place. Uh, oh, Richard said and fell silent, staring at the ground, and Matt found himself regretting bringing this up at all. I'm sorry, he said. I shouldn't have. No, it's fine. I just think... I don't think I want to know. That's all right. It's just... It doesn't really help, does it? It's not going to change anything. I'm still going to be dead and a ghost, except I'll have nightmares about how I died. You get nightmares there. Richard shot him a scathing look. You know what I mean. Yeah, I know. Sorry. I was trying to lighten the mood. I won't look it up, I promise. You can look it up, just don't tell me. Honestly, I'm surprised you haven't already. Matt shrugged, suddenly feeling awkward and self-conscious. I thought about it, he admitted, but it felt, I don't know, felt like an invasion of privacy to do it without you knowing. And if you don't want it, 
if you don't if you don't want to know how you die, then I don't need to know either. He shrugged and looked away from Richard in embarrassment, missing the look of fond exasperation Richard saw him. You're an idiot, the girl stowed him. But a sweet idiot. Matt didn't bring up Richard's death again after that, and, as promised, he refrained from looking it up himself, even though there were days when he was desperately curious. But Richard was right. It didn't change anything, and deep down, Matt knew that knowing Richard had died wouldn't make him happy. Knowing how Richard had died wouldn't make him happy. He'd much rather be able to uh, keep on pretending that Richard had died peacefully. He didn't want to look it up and then find out that his kind, wonderful man had died in some awful, violent way. And so he banished all thoughts about Richard's death from his mind. It wasn't some. It wasn't important, and besides, there were other things for them to talk about. So why did you decide to talk to me? Matt asked a while later, and Richard made a contemplative sound. I told you, he said. I thought you were cute. I'll shut the fuck up. Matt snorted at this point, almost used to getting called cute by a ghost on the regular. And he threw a pen at Richard, watching as it sailed right through him and hit the wall behind him. Was that the real reason? Richard stayed silent for a few minutes and eventually Matt rolled his eyes, ready to move on from this conversation, which he clearly didn't want to have. I, Richard began haltingly, being a ghost. You have no idea how lonely it gets. It's just me the entire time. There's no one else to talk to, and the electricity of this place was just shut off ages ago, so I can't listen to music or watch TV. And time sort of just starts blending together. You just exist and lose track of how much time passes. If it's just been days, months, years, hell, I don't even know how much, how long I've been dead. And that's... It's scary, Matt. It's really, really scary. Richard, Matt began, but the ghost lifted a hand and Matt snapped his mouth shut. When you and your friends came here, Richard continued, it wasn't the first time I'd seen actual people. It was the first time I'd seen actual people in I don't even know how long. I just really wanted to talk to someone, and so I did, and you kept coming back. But why me? You could have spoken to any of the others. Sure, I could have, Richard shrugged. But your friends, they were here to hunt ghosts. I don't think talking to them would have gone too well for me. You were different, so I decided to take a chance, and it worked out. Yeah, I guess it did, Matt smiled at him. I'm sorry you had to go through all this. It sounds awful. It was. But you make it better. You, you ground me, and as weird as it sounds, your presence make me feel more alive, I guess. Oh, that's cute. <clears throat> they fell silent again. Matt lost in his own thoughts, thinking about how glad he was that he'd gone back to that time and had kept coming back. And not just for Richard, but himself too. He understood what Richard meant by feeling more alive since they'd met. He felt it too, but he couldn't really imagine a life without the ghosts anymore. I do really think you're cute, though. A few days later, Matt returned to the house, stopping by on his way to the recycling center. I can't stay long. Which house is this? Because this is GTA, like, which house is this? I can't stay long, he told Richard, who greeted him with his eyebrows raised in confusion. Not used to Matt showing up around this time. I'm only here to drop something off for you. For me? Matt, are you bring me a gift? Yes, Matt replied. Simply wipe... Simply wiping the slight disbelieving smirk off Richard's face. Yeah, he had out the small device, and with the usual look of concentration that appeared on Richard's face whenever he tried to interact with an object, the ghost took it from him, inspecting it curiously. curiously. An iPod? He asked, surprised, and Matt nodded. It's an older one I had lying around at home, he explained. It still works. And you're giving this to me? Why? You said, you mentioned that you're feeling lonely here, and that the electricity was shut off, and you couldn't listen to music anymore. So I put some music on it and just a mix of artists and genres and you don't need electricity to play it. It's fully charged and I have a power bank you can use when you start running out of battery and I can charge both back up in my car whenever I come visit and you can tell me what kind of songs you want me to add to it. I just, I thought it might help with the loneliness when I can't be here. Richard looked at him oddly and Matt shifted, ready to apologize, but before he could say anything, dig himself a deeper hole, Richard let out a heartfelt curse. Fuck, he said. And Matt watched the iPad fall right through Richard's hand as the ghost lost concentration and he barely managed to react in time and catch it before it hit the floor. Fuck, Richard repeated. Sorry, I didn't mean to. How are you even real? I thought you'd enjoy it. Matt, I, I love it. This is probably the most thoughtful thing anyone's ever done for me. It's really not that. No, Matt, Richard interrupted him. And he was suddenly much closer than before. This is, thank you. Thank you so much. You really are something else, aren't you? 
oh my god, this is so romantic. <clears throat> Sorry, that was me. Matt looked away, not knowing what to say. The close proximity to the ghost making his heart beat faster. Oh my god, we're loading in already. Bring on page 12. He cleared his throat and took a few steps backwards, unconsciously wiping his suddenly sweaty palms on his pants. So, uh, he said, his voice cracking slightly, you want to see what music I put on this thing? Hell yeah, Richard replied. And they spent the next few hours going through the music library on the iPod, Richard constantly throwing out suggestions for new songs to add to it. It turned out that apparently ghosts are really into 80s pop. Or maybe that was just Matt's ghost. Matt wondered sometimes what the people living next to Richard's house thought whenever the ghost used Matt's iPod to loudly blast whatever growing collection of songs. But all in all honesty, he didn't care. Whatever they thought, it was worth it whenever Matt came to visit and he walked in on Richard dancing along to whatever 80s pop song was playing, looking happier than he ever did in the weeks Matt had known him. Richard popped up in front of him the second Matt entered the house, and for the first time in a while, Matt actually startled at the sudden appearance. Jesus fuck, he said. I thought we were past that. You can't do that to me. Or do what you want me to join in. Or do you want me to join you in haunting this house? You got me, which is gas dramatically. You figured out my dastardly plan to give you a heart attack and keep you here with me forever. Right, right, Matt said with a fond roll of eyes. Anyway, what's got you so excited? Come with me, Richard sent him an infectious smile that made Matt's heart flutter and he followed the ghost as he set off towards the living room. I've got something to show you. Matt looked around the living room suspiciously once they got there, expecting something to be different, but everything looked the same as it always did. I don't see anything, he said with a slight frown. I, no, no, it's, uh, sit down, Matt. All right, Matt eyed the ghost sceptically, but did as he was told. Sitting down on the dusty floor, Richard joined him a second later, kneeling down in front of him. Close your eyes, Richard said, and Matt raised an eyebrow. Why? Just close your goddamn eyes, Matt. Matt huffed but gave in, closing his eyes dutifully. Good, Richard murmured, his voice soft and warm, sending an involuntary shiver down Matt's spine. Keep them closed. <clears throat> For a few moments, nothing happened. Then, a hand touched his cheek, and Matt drew in a sharp, surprised breath. The hand was cold, and the, the touch was feather-light, barely noticeable. But you're touching me, he said, and couldn't keep the elated smile off his face. I know, Richard replied, voice giddy, and Matt couldn't help but open his eyes, beaming at the ghost and drinking in the happy expression on Richard's face. He knew the touch faded away. I've been practicing, Richard explained. Whenever you're not here, more small objects at first, then I moved on to bigger things, and when I managed to reliably move those, I figured touching people can't be that much more difficult, right? Honestly, I wasn't entirely sure this would work, but hey, no risk, no reward, right? And it worked. I did it. I touched you. Can you do it again, Matt asked, and Richard's face contorted into the familiar look of concentration as he reached out for Matt again. This time, though, his hand passed right through Matt, and Matt watched his face drop in disappointment. Hey, he said, it's okay, you just need more practice, and looking for you, I'm here for you to practice on whatever you like. Oh yeah, Richard said with a smile, smirk, you want me to keep touching you? <laughs> Say less. Matt rolled his eyes, ignoring the warmth creeping up in his face. You're impossible, you know that, right? You know you love it. Mercifully, Richard didn't seem to expect Matt to reply to that, and had, and he had time to calm his racing heart before Richard reached out again, hes hesitating shortly before Matt's face. Can I? He asked, and Matt nodded. You never have to ask. I want you to meet someone, Matt announced loudly as he entered the house, and Richard appeared instantly in front of him. Hello to you too. I'm great, thanks for asking, the ghost said wearily. And Matt rolled his eyes. Sorry, hi, Richard. So good to see you. How are you? I have someone to introduce you to. Richard looked at him apprehensively, not sure he was willing to talk to another living being besides Matt. Not sure he wanted to share what they had, but Matt was almost bouncing with excitement and Richard sighed. Fine, who was it? To his surprise, Matt allowed a sharp whistle and he said another person, a dog came trotting in. This is Peanut, Matt said. Peanut, this is Richard. Say hello. Peanut came up to him, a tail wagging excitedly, and Richard couldn't help but grin down at the dog. Hey, Peanut, he said. Nice, it's nice to meet you. A dog sniffed around him, growing apprehensive <clears throat> when he couldn't detect a scent, and Richard's smile dropped slightly when the dog backed away. Hey, no, Peanut, Matt said, dropping to his knees next to the dog and stroking a reassuring hand through his fur. 
I know Richard's a bit different, but he's a friend. Peanut looked at Richard with intelligent eyes, and Richard must have mustered up all his focus before he leaned down and briefly petted the dog who barked happily at him and started jumping around them matt laughed and richard knew that if he had still had a heartbeat he would have skipped at the sound matt looked at him with warm smiling eyes i know he's not butter he said but i thought you might like him anyway he's perfect matt richard replied and matt missed the way richard was looking at him like he wasn't talking about just the dog they were sitting next to each other on the floor, watching Peanut happily play with one of the squeaky toys Matt had bought. Neither of them had said anything for a while, content to just enjoy each other's presence. <laughs> Not needy. <coughs> oh my God. <coughs> I'm dying. Not needing any words to express that. Matt jumped slightly when his hand was suddenly bathed in ice, and he looked down to see Richard's ghostly hand covering his. The ghost himself staring straight ahead, and Matt looked away again. Carefully, he turned his hand so that his palm was facing up upwards and laced their fingers together. A light blush dusting his cheeks, a warm fuzzy feeling rising in his chest. And as he sat there on the dusty floor of an abandoned house, watching his dog while he was holding hands with the ghost, Matt could remember a single moment of his life when he had felt happier. Richard, Matt called out as he entered the house. So I've been thinking. He moved through the house, his path familiar and well trodden at this point, removing the his coat and dropping it onto the couch you know how you manage to teach yourself to touch people and move bigger things he continued not waiting for the ghost to appear knowing that richard could hear him no matter what what if we tried something similar you said that whenever you get too far away from the house you start feeling woozy right what if we could change that if you could learn to extend more power to touch people maybe we can apply the same principle and make it possible for you to get further away from this house we could i don't know Go for a walk in the park or something. Or, hey, we could go to the cinema together. Watch a movie. Probably going to take a bit more effort, but I think we can do it. He paused, putting his hands on his hips, grinning in excitement. You wouldn't be stuck in this house the whole time anymore. So what do you say? Sound good, Richard? I looked around, a slight frown appearing on his face. It's never, it usually never took that long for Richard to appear. Usually the ghost showed up all, almost as soon as Matt stepped foot in the house, eager to talk about whenever Matt had gotten up to since they last saw each other. Richard, he called out again. Uh-oh. Still no answer. The house remaining quiet, almost eerily. So, and Matt sense, felt a sense of une unease creeping up on him. Something was wrong. Come on, he laughed nervously. This isn't funny, you asshole. He stood there for a few seconds, waiting for a reply, and he still got nothing, he huffed. Stupid ghost, he muttered to himself. <clears throat> Mostly to fill the almost oppressive silence, and he left the living room. If Richard wanted to play fucking hide and seek, then he can have it. This is fucking stupid. He yelled as he checked the other rooms for his friend. Friend. <laughs> Seriously, why are you doing this? He searched the rest of the house, muttering to himself the, the entire time. Occasionally yelling Richard's name, but no sign of the ghost. He ended up back in the living room and sat down heavily on the couch, staring at the floor in front of him. He'd been angry while he wandered the house, annoyed that Richard was playing games with him. But now, now he just felt scared. This wasn't like Richard. He would never do this to Matt. Richard, he called out again. Softly this time, hesitantly, hoping for anything but this heavy, almost unnatural silence. Someone had told him a few months ago that he'd want to see a ghost. He would have told them they were crazy, but now, after all the time he'd spent with Richard, after forming a connection with him, after the feelings, he wanted nothing more than to see a sign, any sign of Richard's ghostly activities. He didn't know how long he'd sat there, waiting for Richard to finally show up and tell him that it had all just been a prank, and, oh my god, the look on Matt's face. But it was dark outside by the time he finally gave up. I hope you're happy, he saw the empty room. I'm leaving. He grabbed his coat and made his way towards the door, pausing with his hand on the doorknob. See you tomorrow, he said. I hope. Except. He came back the next day, and the house was as still and, uh, and quiet as it had been the day before. No sign of the ghost. Who had inhabited it before. Matt sat there, again waiting until the sun went down, and he had to leave, but again Richard didn't show. The 
the same thing happened the next day and the next day and the next day until two weeks had passed and Matt finally had to admit to himself that Richard was gone. Don't you want to move on? Matt asked and Richard frowned at him. Move on? Yeah, you know, leave this place. Rest in peace and all that. Richard seemed to contemplate it for a second and he shrugged. In the past, maybe. Not now. Richard looked at him, ghosty eyes boring straight into his soul. No, he said. I, too, have many things keeping me here now. Like what? Richard leveled with him. An unimpressed air, Matt blushed. blushed. Oh, he said. Oh, yeah, you idiot. There's a certain fondness in Richard's voice that made Matt squirm and... Oh, he was so fucked. And well, that'd have been a fucking lie, hadn't it? After Matt finally acknowledged that he had been quite literally ghosted, he did what he always did when he uh, very empathetically did not want to deal with whatever shit was going on in his life. He shut down and threw himself into his work. He got up early in the morning, left for work as soon as possible, and then stayed until everyone else was gone, and he couldn't justify staying any longer. Then he went home, got straight into his bed, and rinsed and repeat. The trash of Los Santos had never been this well recycled. He ignored his friends, even as they blew up his phone with their calls and text messages at an increasing rate, the more he didn't answer. He couldn't just, just couldn't bring himself to talk to them. He knew that they had he knew they knew that something was wrong and they would ask questions and try and get him to talk about it and Matt, Matt just couldn't. He couldn't talk about the ghost he had met, had befriended, had fallen in. He just couldn't talk about Richard, even thinking his name hurt too much. All this time, all this time that he thought him and Richard were getting closer, he had apparently been lying to himself. So what if they had been flirting with each other pretty much every time they met? What if Matt had felt more connected to Richard than he ever had to anyone before? Clearly, he had never mattered as much to Richard as Richard had to him, and God, he couldn't believe how fucking stupid he had been. What the hell had he thought would happen? That he would could fall for a freaking ghost and just live happily ever after with him till death do us part? Or maybe not, because apparently ghosts fucking existed. He'd been so stupid to believe that he and Richard could ever have something more. What could he have told his friends? Would he have moved into the goddamn house, just as bound to it as Richard had been? And what would have happened once Matt grew older while Richard remained the same? Took the way he looked before when he we had died. It was better this way, Matt told himself over and over again. At least this way, he, he didn't invest more time into something that was doomed to fail. A clean cut and Richard realised it long before Matt had. Richard had always been smarter than him. And yet, and yet as much as he tried to convince himself that he was better off without the ghost in his life, he still couldn't deny how his heart ached, how much he missed Richard, how he would give anything to get him back, even just for one more day to say a proper goodbye. And so he continued drowning himself in his work in his desperate attempt at numbing the pain away, fully aware it wasn't enough. Would never be enough, not with the empty space where his heart had been. He woke up in the morning, allowing himself a few seconds to blankly stare at, the, at his ceiling before he forced himself out of bed for another day of non-stop work until he was exhausted enough to go back to sleep again. He batted into his kitchen to start up the coffee machine and froze, staring like a deer in the headlights at his friends who were sitting at his kitchen table, as if they belonged there. What the fuck are you doing here? Angel looked up at him from her phone, putting in herself. You talk are you talking to us? I get who else would I be talking to? The other ones have broke into my house. Hey, I just wanted to clarify. I wasn't sure you still knew you could talk to us, given how you've been ignoring us. Also, we didn't break in, Brad chimes in. I used my key. Brad, you don't have a key. Matt threw his hands up in exasperation, and Pred shrugged. Sure I do. I made a copy ages ago. You what? No, no. You, you know what? I'm just I'm just going to pretend you didn't say that. So what are you doing here? You're ignoring us, Angel said. And don't but to pretend you weren't. We're not that stupid. Well, me and Espinosa aren't. I'm not so sure about Pred. But we were worried about you. Espinosa interrupted before Pred could protest. You don't usually shut us out like that. 
What happened? Nothing happened, Matt snapped. I was just busy with work and all. Oh, bullshit, Fred doled. Drawled. No way there's enough trash in this godforsaken city for you to spend as much time in the recycling center as you have been. You're a shit liar, Rhodes. I'm not lying. You... You know, we know that you've been seeing someone, right? Espinosa cut him off and Matt blinked a few times. Huh? Matt said intelligently, staring at his friends. I wasn't... Oh, stop it, Angel scoffed. You spent the past months disappearing somewhere for hours and end, blowing off plans of this for no good reason. You've been a weird and smiley. I was not weird and smiley, Matt protested. And Angel shot him an in in incredulous look, and I was not seeing anyone. Listen, Rhodes, Fred said, walking over to him and putting a hand on his shoulder. Keep your little secrets, it's okay. But if that guy broke your heart, just give us the name and we will kill him for you. Matt flinched at that. You don't have to kill anyone, he said. It's fine. I'm fine. You're not fine. You've been working yourself to the bone, not talking to anyone, completely shutting us out. We're your friends, Matt. We care about you, Espinosa said, sounding upset. And Matt felt a slight pang of guilt. If you don't want to talk about it, that's fine, but no more hiding away. You're coming out with us. But I don't want to, Matt whined, and Angel scoffed. Tough shit. We already called Tessa and told her you're taking the day off. That woman was basically crying in relief. Now go take a shower, and dumbass, we're leaving soon. Matt grumbled, but you neither was so argue with his friend. Oh my god. But they got like this. And there was a chance, the tiny chance, that maybe they were right. Matt insisted on taking his own car. I remember because he hated being driven places, but also because it gave him an easier escape if they need if he needed it. And they ended up at the grocery store because according to Angel, the contestants of his the contents of his fridge were fucking depressing. Matt half heartedly pushed the shopping cart forward, training after his friends as they bickered over what to buy. Matt himself honestly couldn't care less. He hadn't had a proper appetite in weeks, only eating because he knew he had to, not because he wanted to. He could feel a headache building behind his eyes. The bright fluorescent light at the grocery store and the sound of his friends arguing not helping. He was tired, exhausted to the bone. The continuous long hours at work finally catching up on him now that he was forced to take it a bit slower. And all he wanted to do was go back home and crawl into bed where he could forget the world and the stupid ghosts in it. Matt? The voice made him stop at his tracks. And he stiffened, eyes widening. No, it couldn't be. Not now, after all this time. Matt, the voice asked again, and Matt took a deep, fortifying breath before he turned around, and there he was. It is you, Richard said, his eyes full of wonder and amazement, his voice sounding so relieved and wonderful and familiar, and Matt wanted to cry. There were so many questions that he wanted to ask. Was Richard really here? Was it just a hallucination Matt's mind had conjured in his grief? How was he here? Why was he here? In a grocery store of all places. Why had he disappeared? Where the fuck had he been? Except why had he finally managed to speak? The only question that came out was... Yorkshire gold, huh? <laughs> he nodded towards the package in Richard's hands. I'm more of a Yorkshire red man myself. Richard let out a helpless little laugh and Matt thought he'd never... Heard a more beautiful sound before. I can't believe this whole time it was talking to someone who prefers Yorkshire Red, Richard said. If I had known that... God, this is a weird hallucination, Matt muttered, and Richard frowned. Hallucin... Matt, no, this is real. I'm really here. But you can't be, Matt insisted. You, you disappeared. You left me. You were a ghost. You can't be here. I... Let me go somewhere else. I can explain, I promise. I, I want to explain. And Matt knew that he probably shouldn't. Richard had just left him without a word, and Matt was angry. He had every right to be angry. You should just tell him to fuck off and turn around and walk away. But he looked at Richard, <clears throat> and the hopeful expression on his face and heart twisted painfully. And he knew there wasn't a, a world in which he refused to listen to whatever Richard had to say. Matt looked around, but his friends were gone, apparently not having noticed that he was following them anymore. And he let go of the shopping cart. Sure, he said. My car's outside. Let's go. They didn't talk during the drive. Matt's hands clenched so tightly around the steering wheel that his knuckles were turning white. This was surreal, and he wasn't entirely sure he, wa he wasn't just imagining all of this. Richard had disappeared weeks ago, 
And then he'd shown up back again in a fucking grocery store, holding his teeth as if it was nothing. And now he was in his car, and Matt, Matt had no idea what to make of all of this. He finally parked his car by the beach, and together they got out, climbing onto the roof of the car facing the ocean. Matt brief, briefly glanced at his cell phone, which had been vibrating in his pocket almost nonstop, and saw the screen lit up with messages from his friends. Where are you? I swear if you've left to go back to work, I'm going to kick your ass. If you've been kidnapped and need help, say something. Everything okay? Richard asked. Huh? Oh, he put the phone back in his pocket. No, it's just my friends. I was in the store there, wondering where I am. You need to go back? No, they'll be fine. So, he continued after a few beats of silence. You're really just not my imagination? No, Richard said, and Matt swallowed. What the hell happened then? You just disappeared with that word, and I thought, where have you been? And how are you here now? Richard took a deep breath. So? Turns out I wasn't dead after all. What the hell? Huh? Apparently I was in a car crash. Barely made it out alive, but I did. This entire time, I was in a coma. I only recently woke up. Coma? Matt echoed and Richard nodded. Don't ask me how this whole ghost thing worked. I have no idea, and it's not like I could ask anybody, anyone about that without running the risk of getting committed. To be honest, when I woke up, I was convinced that I'd imagine you and you were just some weird fucked up coma dream or something. And then I saw you today and you recognized me. So when you disappeared, I assume that's when I woke up. Yes. Holy shit. I know. This is insane. I know. And that's, uh, and there were so many things that I could, should probably ask. So many things they needed to talk about and figure out. But none of it mattered. Can I... Matt reached out and grabbed Britch's hand, intertwining their fingers, and he lifted it up, staring at their clasped hands in wonder. Shut up, <laughs> Rich's hand felt warm, alive, his touch more solid than ever it, it, before, and he let out a short laugh that turned into a sob halfway through. You're alive, he breathed, you're really alive. Richard let out a wet laugh and Matt looked at him in surprise, taking in the eyes that were shiny with unshed tears. I was so sure that I'd imagine you, Richard, I woke up and they told me what happened.